natural dyeing of silk and cotton is an age-old tradition in Laos, which has been perpetuated by Lao women up to this day. The vast majority of women, especially those living in the countryside, continue to weave by hand in their homes and often prepare the yarns themselves, including the dyeing, enabling them to produce beautiful and intricate silks and cottons for their own use and for sale on a small scale. However, these traditional methods of production come up against challenges in the new economic environment in Laos, that is replacing self-sufficiency with commercial exchanges and where new opportunities exist for exporting. The mountainous and isolated provinces of Sien Kuang and Hua Pan are typically strong traditional textile producing areas. The USAID development project has been instigated in these provinces to encourage and promote natural dyeing techniques and help commercialization. The project, where the importance of the ancient skill and know-how in natural dyeing present throughout Laos, is helping preserve this knowledge and promote the activity in order to generate income for communities in rural areas, especially for women, who are the guardians of this beautiful tradition. There are two types of natural yarn used for weaving textiles in Laos. One is from animals such as silk, from the silkworm, and the other is from plants, including cotton, hemp, jute and banana. These two natural sources give fibres that have very different characteristics. Colour is important, as fine Laos silks are rich in the use of many colour combinations. In Laos, every part of the country has its traditional dominant colour, which is not only due to different ethnic groups and cultural practices, but also from the availability of natural dye material sources surrounding the local community. Geography, soil, water, weather and environment all influence the presence of dye plants and the colours that are available. อยู่เซียงขวางเฮาจะมักใช้สีเขียวเนาะแล้วก็สีฟ้าแล้วก็สีขาวสีอ่าดําเนาะอันนี้มันเห็นนิยมใช้หลายที่สุดอยู่ใน
seeds and vegetables. The second group of dyes is extracted from products made by insects, such as sticklac. These two families are widely used throughout the country. For mineral-based dyeing, such as with mud, many dyers only employ it for a secondary dye to obtain a darker hue. Many natural dye plants are sensitive to season, age and condition, and also depending on whether the dye material is fresh or dried. Similarly, dyes will obtain different pigments from the same plant if they are harvested and used for dyeing during the monsoon or the dry season. A key aspect to using natural dyes is preserving the sustainability of the natural sources. When products using natural dyes are introduced to a wider market, the demand of production, raw materials, energy and labour will increase. Many raw materials can be grown in the garden, for example marigold flowers, or bushes such as indigo, and certain trees. However, others are sourced in forest areas, and attention must be taken to reduce damage to trees or plants that would cause death of the sources and destroy the environment. Guidance and details are given in the handbook on how to harvest dye raw materials from plants, how to manage water, waste and pollution, as well as how to create renewable dyeing sources. In the dyeing process, most dyeing materials require high temperatures to enable the pigment to better penetrate into the threads and to enhance the fastness of the dyes. This is called the hot dye bath technique. Heat can influence or change the original colour of some dyes, and so in order to obtain certain beautiful colour varieties, a second dyeing method has been invented using a cold dye bath. This is used, for example, for indigo. However, the dye solutions that the dyers extract from plants and other dye materials, on their own, are not able to bond into the yarn fast enough or in sufficient quantity. The use of a mordant is therefore necessary in the dyeing process. Mordants can be made from metal, for example using iron rust, and from minerals such as alum, salt, and lime. It can also be made from plants, including lemon and tamarind, and from burnt plant material from filtering water through the fine ash powder. The techniques of applying the mordants can be classified into three methodologies depending on which moment they are performed, known as pre-mordanting, simultaneous mordanting and post-mordanting. The choice of the mordant can affect the result of the final colour, and in some cases even using a different mordant with the same dye material will create different shades of colour. Mastering these dyeing techniques has given new impetus to women for their production of traditional textiles and will enable them to develop new products. อันมาเพิกอบรมครั้งนี้เนาะโฮซิตี้ว่ามีคุณประโยชน์หลายเกี่ยวกับการย้อมสีแบบธรรมชาติเนี่ยนะพออยู่อมค้างตัวเฮา
and the internet can be used to attract international markets and export across neighbouring borders. Simple applications are explained, such as how to set up a Facebook page, how to communicate with WhatsApp and Line, and how to use BCL1 online banking. Notions of effective presentations and commercial techniques are also taught. เห็ดมันทันสมัยเฮาเนาะบ่ทันฮู้เถื่อเนาะเฮามาได้เฮียนมื้อนี้แล้วเฮาพอจะเข้าใจอยู่ว่ามันจะใช้ได้ได้อ